Hello and welcome to Lab Ride. No intro this time, sorry, but I already delivered this shield to my friend who ordered it. So I can't even show you the finished product, just this little picture here. It's like a Viking style round show you with leather covering and some latex painting on the shield boss. Also the shield boss is reinforced with a plastic core, so your hand is safe. And this video should be watched in conjunction with my videos how to make a kite or heater shield and how to make a lab sword or dagger. Starting here with the core material. It's 6mm plywood multiplex, that is the expensive variant of plywood. And after discerning where the middle is, I'm making a 90 centimeter diameter circle with nail and string technique, which will give me a one meter shield with five centimeters of foam on each edge. So I'm marking the edge of the shield, I also mark that I have to cut a hole in the center. Now it's time to cut it out using a jigsaw and of course use proper safety equipment. And after cutting, I sand all the edges so there are no rough edges or splinters left on the core. This is just a wooden bar I use as a reinforcement. Cutting it to side, sanding off the edges. And this will also form the center grip of the shield. I got both this and the core material in my local hardware store or Bauhaus. Now I'm marking where I have to cut. And I pre-drill some holes to get my jigsaw in there. And I leave a bridge in the middle of this hole. So the center grip will be really strong and not just the wooden bar and the glue in there. Cut it out with the jigsaw. Using a file to get the corners a bit rounded in. And once again sand the edges. Now it's time to glue this in. I'm using regular wood glue. And I use a lot of it and I will wipe off the axis later. Make sure it's centered. And I clamp it in in the middle. Now it's time for some nails. I will put these at both ends of the board. I 
pre-drill bought in the core, so I won't crack it when I nail this in. So the drill I use is a little bit smaller than the nail I'm using. And after I hammer it in, I round it over on the top using an assortment of hammer, pliers, anvil, and a small screwdriver to round it around. And this will not only prevent the nail from pulling back out, but it also gives me an eye where I can later attach some leather strap to carry the shield around with. Do the same thing on the other side and then clamp it down to good measure. Wipe off the excess glue and let it dry on the knife. Next day I'm using my oscillating grinder to get the grip rounded off and actually more comfortable to actually grip. Also handheld sandpaper. And this took a good long while of sanding. It was round enough and comfortable enough for me to want to grip the shield here. Also rounding off the core a bit so it doesn't begin in the back of your hand when you're holding the shield. Once this is comfortable enough, I wrap it in some strips of leather I pulled from an old couch. I've been using my usually Kuvolfix glue. There's regular glue right here, not contact glue. And I try to wrap this around real tight so many tries getting the angle right that I had to apply more glue to it but I eventually managed to wrap it how I wanted. Cutting a 5 cm wide block. This will help me mark where I need to cut this 10 mm thick plus soda weapons foam. And with this block it's easy to mark 5 centimeters either side. And at this point I should also mark where the core sits. And using a break knife I cut out the foam. Now to put in some extra work and go back to the floor to mark where the core sits. Because when I glue it on it should really be centered. After cutting it I roughen up the surface with some sanding paper. So the glue will stick, probably using curve fix glue, which could be used to glue soles to shoes, really tough stuff. And you will need a lot of the stuff for the shield. Uh, the shield is very big, usually a really big shield would be 80 centimeters across. This is a meter, it's really huge, but I used like two cans of glue for it. So everywhere where I want to glue the core to, so not at the edge, not at the middle, everywhere in between. 
screen where I marked. I put a thin layer of glue and also on the other side on the actual wooden core and then let it dry for 10 minutes and now it's time to glue it onto the foam and you have to get this right the first time so make sure you're good and centered And then press it down firmly. And there is a bit of overkill, but I also weigh it down and let it dry overnight. It's time to cut. The foam that will cover the edges, now it's 6mm thick weapons foam and I cut 3 1m long strips 5cm across and sand them and then apply glue to both this and the foam from the front of the shield and just Bend it while I glue it in, tugging it on the inside and this large diameter you can do it like this. If you make a really small shield you'll have to get a bit more tricky. Maybe cut some notches on the inside edge so it will properly form around. After gluing it in, cutting off the excess, press it down firmly. I'm not gluing this to the actual core at this point because that would make the process more complicated. And I cut three more strips of 10mm thick weapons foam. These are 7.5cm across and they cover core from the other side so it's probably sandwiched and once again press it down and only now am I cutting out the middle part so it is really flush with the core of the shield and I got some glue on the middle here so I had to clean that up as well this is a softball, a football I got from eBay or Amazon and it makes for a good base for the shield boss. I use scissors to cut off a hard piece of foam like a nib from the production and then cut it in half. And I mark what I have to tear out. get my plastic cup as the core for the boss in there and using scissors and mostly my fingers I pry out as much as is needed to get the plastic bowl in there and then smooth it off by turning it inside out scissors you want to have at least two centimeters of foam on either side of the bowl and I roughen up the surface of the bowl and then it's time to glue it in once again using cover fix and I'm not using it as contact glue, just as regular glue. So I can position this properly and tightly in there. 
and then I weigh it down to dry overnight. Now I'm cutting some 6mm big weapons film to form the rim of the boss. I make sure that the hole in the middle is a bit smaller than the bowl so the edge of the bowl will sit on the foam and not hit your hand if pushed inside by a weapon hitting your hand. If you really want to you can make the wooden core of the shield a bit smaller than the bowl so there's no chance of the edge of the bowl getting pushed into your hand. So after cutting it, sanding it, once again use Curvofix as a compact glue. So spread it at a dry for 10 minutes, then glue the two parts together. Press together firmly. And it won't come apart anytime soon. While that is drying, I'm using my belt sander to clean up the outer edge of the shield. Just make sure it's nice and flush. And what I do now is I cover the foam ball on the outside with Kubel Fix. Otherwise, it will soak in all of your latex paint like a sponge and you will use way too lot and it will become way too heavy. So I cover it with the glue and that will keep the latex paint from being soaked in. So the center shield boss will be painted with latex to make it look a bit like steel. But the video files got lost or I forgot to film it. So if you want to know how to paint it, look at my videos how to make a lap sword or dagger or how to make a kite or heel to shield where I actually filmed the painting process. But basically this got seven layers of latex, then two layers of black latex and then a silver dry brush to make it look like old metal and finally sealed in with isoflex top coat to keep the latex safe and I only bothered to paint the top of it not the bottom because the bottom will be glued onto the shield core. Sanding the front of the shield to make sure it's good and rough for applying the glue. I will use this white thin upholstery leather to cover the shield. That will look a bit more authentic and be tougher than covering a native paint. You could also use fabric linen or just cotton and cover the shield with that. But I got this leather very cheap on eBay. Lucky find actually. And I mark where I want to put the shield and then apply the glue once again both sides. This time I don't let it dry for 10 minutes, so I can potentially correct any mistakes and make sure it sticks nice and flush. And then I weigh it down and let it dry overnight. Once this is dried, it is now time to cut it into shape. Doing it like this rather than cutting it first and then gluing it on makes sure it is nice and flush with the edges of the shield. I'm 
cutting across in here and not cutting all of this out because I want to fold this on the inside and use it to cover the core. That just makes it nicer to hold the shield if the wooden edge is covered with a bit of leather. And I'm also cutting a small piece of leather to cover the wooden core where it's not covered by those four corners. And I glue these pieces in with a few flakes as before. And then I also do the four corners over these two pieces and this covers all of the edge at the grid. I cut some strips from the leather, about 12 centimeters wide, enough to cover a centimeter on the front, and then all of the weapons go, and about 2 centimeters of the wood, so there's no foam shown. And I will glue this on the other way around than the rest of the leather, so the rough outer side is showing to make it visually a bit more interesting. If this were a real shield, the edge would be reinforced with rawhide. Uh, rawhide dries to be hard, so I can't use real rawhide, but with this leather and with showing the rough side of it, I think it looks pretty good. And there's no way to get this on without a lot of folds, so don't worry too much about it. Also, it was not quite long enough, so I will do on a little extra piece when I fix the front. Didn't put any glue on the front of the shield, so now I'm putting some glue there. Make sure it's not spread too wide by pressing it down for a moment, and after that, let it dry for 10 minutes finally glue it together. And glue on the extra piece to cover the little gap. After that is done, it is Time to latex your shield boss, which I sadly didn't catch on camera, and glue it with the shield. And I also put a nice room design on the shield my friend made with just some red paint. I used flexi paint for this purpose. You see how we have a red. And what I'm doing now is a totally optional step. The glue itself should keep the leather on the rim of the shield more secure, more than enough. But I thought it would look nice if I were to see it on it. So I'm taking out my leather sewing kit, long needle, and pliers and just started sewing all the way around. I did the beginning on camera here, but finished it up later watching some Star Trek in the evening. And it took about two or three episodes of Deep Space Nine before I was finished going all the way around.
I found that it works fastest if you work like a sewing machine. So you have the bottom and the top string. And once you go through with your top spring, you make a loop that you secure, that you keep from slipping back through the material by looping it around the bottom spring. Then just go back through the hole you just made, pull both strings tight and you're ready to go for the next hole. And that is basically how a sewing machine works. What I also didn't film, I'm only now realizing it, I put some leather straps to carry the shield around on it and that process was very much similar to how I did it in the Kaito Hita shield episode. I just didn't have to nail it to this shield because in the beginning I put the two eyes with the nails on there. So I put a strap on there that goes from one nail to the center grip of the shield and that way you can carry the shield around on your back or if you're on battle you can still support a lot of the weight of the shield from your neck so you don't have to constantly lift it with your arm if you're on a battle line. Makes it a bit easier to handle because this shield is really big and massive. So that's it for today. Hope you liked this episode. Thanks and goodbye.